Hi, my name is Jim Franklin. I'm a composer and shakuhachi performer who also uses live electronics, and one of the pieces of electronics that I often use is a bustle castle, which we can see here. If you look at my YouTube channel, you can find various pieces using the bustle castle, or sometimes several bustle castles, and some people have asked me to give an explanation of how I use the instrument, how I patch it. So this is just a brief, totally unrehearsed introduction. This here is basically a naked Bustle Castle 1.5. I have two connections which I've already made on it. One is from the positive voltage to the input of the step generator, and the output of the step generator going to the rate modulation of the LFO. These are connections that I permanently have, and so I've just made them with small cables to make sure there's nothing in the way. Now, I tend to use the auxiliary output of the, the Bustle so that I can get voltages in and out, as we'll see in a minute. So I'm going to firstly connect from the oscillator output to the left output of the auxiliary. Now one of the things that's missing on the castle is attenuators for either the volume level of the output or on the various inputs to control the various uh, aspects of the circuit. This is a good thing because it means that you know, there's nothing getting in the way of you doing whatever you want. But I always like to have a volume control. So I've got one here, just a potentiometer that I've built, connected to the auxiliary output left channel. So this is the Bustle Castle. We can get changes of pitch. Number. Now, one of the interesting things that I use a lot is what we just heard. If you have the main oscillator pitch set at zero and the secondary oscillator set at some other pitch, we can get a slightly richer version of that signal with timbre changed by the wave shape. Now, it would be nice to do that in real time, so of course we can. We can obviously connect from, say, the LFO to the wave shape. But that's a fairly large change if you just connect your patch cable, so it would be nice to be able to make it smaller. Normally you would use an attenuator for this, but the design of the castle enables you to get tricky and to put in, say, just one resistor between the uh, voltage source and the voltage you're, the point you're controlling. This here is a cable in which I've soldered a 500 kilo ohm resistor in the middle of it. So if I connect that to the wave shape input, we're getting a lot smaller variation. Now if I want to have more, I can add a second resistor. If I'm add a resistor, in this case 220k, and a switch. I can switch this on or off. So let's add this resistor. Now one thing that works very nicely is if you connect the wave shape input to earth, which is actually the negative of the battery supply, which I'm doing via a switch here, I can actually go from to this to cut it out completely just by a single flick of a switch. And what we find is actually that this becomes more stable at the same time. The castle, its aesthetic, is that you have lots and lots of dirt in the signal, which is also a good thing. It's a, an interesting aesthetic, particularly for someone like me who plays a shakuhachi, which can be a very noisy instrument, can be a very pure instrument, but there's a parallel with the castle. Now, another thing that we can do is to be able to change the pitch, not just by changing. Uh, where am I? 
That was what for changing. A knob here. But by having a potentiometer also with a voltage coming out of it. Now to do this, what I have here at the side is another potentiometer with a switch in it which enables me to take a voltage via the, it's connected via these cables to the auxiliary output either as an external voltage and that will be when I patch it the 4.5 roughly volts of the battery supply or this box also has a little internal lithium battery built in so that I can have either just 0 to 3 volts or 0 to 4.5. Let's use the battery supply. Now in the castle the way I've got it patched I've got the positive going to the inset input of the, the uh, stepped generator. So I can take from the second patch point there to the right output here. This is now going via these cables to the input of this potentiometer. And if I then come from the output of that potentiometer, this is this cable here, I can then patch, for instance, to here. Now one of the, the issues that we have to pay attention to here is that we need an earth connection to do this. So I have earth points added in here to the auxiliary output so that I can connect the earth of the potentiometer to the earth of the bustle. And that enables me via the potentiometer here to change pitch. Now this has the advantage over the internal potentiometer that I can set a basic pitch here and then always come back to that basic pitch. So I always know where my starting point is. Now, um, next thing that we could do would be to change the, uh, the pitch of the main oscillator. Now this is being used at the moment, this bustle is being used in its FM mode. So if I simply turn this up, I'm getting something very close to ring modulation. If I turn off the earth connection that I've set up before, I get this. And if I turn off the resistor that I set up before, it becomes a bit less. Now, the other nice thing that we have on the Bastel is the possibility of resetting the main oscillators, no, I'm sorry, not the main oscillator, the LFO's key point, going from the LFO out to LFO reset. Now, if I have a switch again, it's just soldered into a patch cable, going to the reset from the LFO square wave output to the reset, then at the moment I have, let's get it so we can hear a bit more clearly. Now if I change this, it changes into a sawtooth. This is described in the, the manual of the, the Bastel, so there's no secrets here. But that immediately gives us a lot of potential for different levels, different types of timbre, at the flick of a switch, literally. Another little trick, using the same idea of, of uh, potentiometers and switches and so on, if I take the control voltage that I'm getting from the potentiometer here, I can make use of it to also control at the same time the pitch of the, the main oscillator, which I'll connect in there. That's the common from this switch. The control voltage is coming from here, and the other leg of this switch is going to earth, which actually stabilizes the pitch somewhat. To use this, I have to turn up the pitch modulation a little bit here, but now what I get, if I'm at a low pitch, if I'm connected to earth here with this switch, 
I'm getting just the normal prep pattern that I would get. If, however, I now connect this, I'm feeding some of the control voltage via the uh, switch into the control voltage input of the main oscillator, which means that now I can get all sorts of variable pitches. and change things radically just with the flick of a switch. So, these are just some ideas. Please experiment with using switches, resistors and so on to make your bustle castle do whatever you want. I hope this has been useful for you.